talk now about the individual stack frames or function activation records that are stored on our stack. So when we talk here about, we store the information about the function call like worker four and all the information needed for it. What does this mean? So first of all, the term activation record, function activation record or, or AR in short, is also often referred to as stack frame because it really looks a little bit like a little frame that you put on top of other frames on our stack. So what does this include? Well, it includes the memory for the local variables, including the input parameters of a function. Note that all these local variables are organized by the compiler and they are relatively organized to the location of this activation record on the stack. We also store the instruction pointer, which is the return address of the caller, which points to the memory of the next instruction we should run after this function completes. This allows us to continue to run the calling function once our currently activation record completed. We also have to store information and memory for the return value. And this value then needs, is copied between our current activation record and of the one of the caller. When you start an application, the activation record of the main function is pushed, such as here in the example, we see the main function here on this function called stack. Um, in fact, programmers should not care about how all this stack organization works, but it's very important to know because many security problems with code arose because people don't understand the stack. And particularly in C, we have a direct access and we can manipulate a lot of things. It's very good opportunity to understand how it works. So as this was a bit, a lot of information, let's go into the individual parts of it. So assume we have our little code like here, our main function, which has a couple of instructions and statements that we try to run. And now we assume our instruction pointer has processed, you know, these first two statements and we are here on this virtual line. So let's have a look how our function call stack looks like. At this point, we only have one activation record or one stack frame about the main function. And what this needs to be stored in this activation record? Well, we need to store local variables, we said. So we have here the local variable x, which was an integer with the value five. Yeah, so we need to have this stored. Also, we have this variable result, but this variable has not been initialized yet. It's not assigned anywhere. So it's unclear what it is. We also have a return value because main returns a value of type integer, but this value is yet also unknown. And also we have the memory location um, of the code that we need to run once main completes. Right, so the compiler is really in, in charge to assign this uh, stack memory. And like I said, here it basically said, first we place x, then we place result as integer, then we place the return value and the return address. So, and then the actual values were as we have just discussed them. And uh, when you wonder what are, do these question mark values, what, what is the value if I would try to read it? Well, the value would be whatever value would be on the stack written in this memory location before. Okay, so when you return from a function, you know the return value and the return address. So all you need to do is to copy the return value here of worker one, for example, we have to copy its return data into the variable called result. And then we have to continue with the code that is stored here in the return address. 